good evening everyone today is the lecture 4 for the unit cell the unit of life so till now in the earlier lectures what we have studied is we get to know what is cell what is the what are the different organelles which are present in a cell what is the difference between a prokaryotic cell and a eukaryotic cell how a prokaryotic cell what are the organelles which are not present in prokaryotic cells then we dwell more into the eukaryotic cells where we understand the differences between the plant cells and the animal cells what are the major differences between these two then further we studied what is endomembrane system what are the components of endomembrane system and we studied the function of those components in detail so today we will be studying the remaining organelles which are present in the cell so starting with the mitochondria so mitochondria was discovered by kolliker in 1880 he discovered mitochondria in the muscle cells of the insects altman then named them as bioplast benda in 1897 finally coined the term mitochondria mitochondria is a plural term for singular we use mitochondrion so mitochondrion is a spherical or rod shaped cell organelle as we can see in this figure and uh, it has two membranes so if you guys remember it in the first lecture i uh, gave a mnemonics to remember the organelles which have two membranes so it was uh, namak where n stands for nucleus m stands for mitochondria and uh, k stands for chloroplast so uh, one of the organelles which has two uh, two membranes is mitochondria so the outer it has two membranes the one is the outer membrane and the other one is the inner membrane the outer membrane as we can see in this figure is smooth while the inner membrane has finger like projections or finger like infoldings which is known as cristae uh, as we can see in this figure and the inner membrane has stocked particles which are also known as racker particles or f not f1 particles or we also call them as atp synthase particles so these uh, particles help in the oxidative phosphorylation and mitochondria helps in the aerobic respiration inside the cell therefore mitochond and uh, the mitochondrial cavity is filled with the homogeneous granular mitochondrial matrix since uh, uh, like uh, the mitochondrial mitochondria is the site where the uh, atp synthase complex is present and it helps in the generation of the energy inside the cell it is also known as the power house of the cell or it is also called as the storage batteries of the cell since it helps in the generation of the energy in the form of atp uh, one of the important features of mitochondria is that it has its own dna it has its own genetic material in the form of a circular mitochondrial dna rna and 70s ribosomes plus some of the proteins enzymes and lipids are present within the mitochondria the mitochondria just like the bacterial cells divide by the fission by the process of fission uh, the function as i told mitochondria synthesize and store the energy rich molecules atp that is adenosine triphosphate during the aerobic respiration so therefore they are also called as the power house of the cell so this was about the organelle mitochondria the next is the plastids uh, plastids were first observed by schimper in 1885 and they are found in plants and euglenoids euglenoids are the organelles are the organism sorry euglenoids are the organisms which function which can perform photosynthesis during the daytime and can use their flagella to procure their food just like in animal cell during the night so uh, plastids are present in both plant cells and euglenoids and plastids are classified based on the different types of pigments which are present in them so they are classified into three broad classes which is chromoplast leucoplast and chloroplast so chromo as i already mentioned in the first class chromo is related to colors so chromoplast these are different colored plastids that contain the carotenoids uh, these are present in fruits flowers and leaves and uh, leucoplast leucoplast are colorless plastids and the main function of these plastids is to store the food materials so examples of these plastids are amyloplast amylo related to starch so amyloplast are the ones which store the starch 
Eluronoplast that stores the protein and ileoplast that stores the lipids. So these are the three basic types of leucoplast. The next is the chloroplast. We all know what is chloroplast since we study it from our basic, uh, like from earlier classes also. So these are green colored plastids that contains the chlorophyll and helps in the process of photosynthesis. So these are the green colored plastids containing chlorophylls and carotenoids, <coughs> uh, especially carotenes and xanthophylls. Uh, as I mentioned also earlier, like chloroplast is also a double membranous cell organelle. And the matrix is called the stroma, as we can see in this figure. The matrix is called as the stroma. And the stroma has many membranous sac-like structures, which is called as thylakoid. We can imagine thylakoid as a single coin. So it has many sac-like structures, which is called thylakoids. And if I arrange one coin over the other and make a pile, so it will give us a, a appearance of what we called as a granum. So when we arrange thylakoids in a pile-like manner, in a like a pile of a coin, it arranged to form the granum. The grana are interconnected by the stroma lamella, as we can see. So they are these different grana are connected through stroma lamella, which are also known as intergranal membranes or stromal thylakoids. These membranous structures have photosynthetic pigments, for example, chlorophylls, carotenes, and xanthophylls. And they have major complexes uh, like photosystem 1, photosystem 2, cytochrome B6 F complex and ATP synthase that helps in the process of uh, photosynthesis. The stroma, just like, uh, uh, for example, just like mitochondria, the chloroplast also has its DNA. So it has a circular chloroplast DNA, RNA, 70S ribosomes, enzymes and coenzymes that helps in carrying out the various activities within the chloroplast. And uh, as I've mentioned, the main function of the chloroplast is that it helps in the process of photosynthesis. The next organelle is ribosome. So ribosomes are the non-membrane bound structures and they are the granular structures which were first observed under the electron microscope as dense particles by George Palladay in 1953. So ribosomes are composed of ribonucleic acid and proteins and are not bound by any membrane. Usually the ribosome consists of two units. One is a larger unit as we can see in this figure. So it is, <coughs> it is made up of two units. One is a larger subunit, the other is a smaller subunit. And uh, the major difference, ribosome is, uh, is an organelle that is present in both prokaryotes as well as in eukaryotes. But the major difference between the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic ribosome is that uh, is between the uh, subunits that assemble to form the ribosome as a whole. So in prokaryotic ribosome, the subunits are the 50S and the 30S. These 50S and 30S subunit assemble to give us the uh, 70S ribosome in case of prokaryotes, while in case of eukaryotes, the subunits are little different from the prokaryotes. So in case of eukaryotes, the subunits are 60S and 40S. So these 60S and 40S subunits <coughs> combine to form, assemble to form a bigger rib a ri to form a ribosome as a whole structure in the form of 80S ribosome. <laughs> so this is the major difference between a prokaryotic ribosome and a eukaryotic ribosome. And it is very important to remember that the prokaryotic ribosome is a 70S ribosome that is made up of two subunits, 50S and 30S. And uh, while eukaryotic ribosome is made up of 80S ribosome, is, is an 80S ribosome that is made up of 60S and 40S subunits. Here S actually stands for the Swedberg unit or we can say it is a sedimentation coefficient and it is indirectly a measure of its density and size. So we cannot directly sum up and say that 50S plus 30S should give us 80S. No, it is not like that. So 50S and 30S will give us a ribosome, which is a 70S ribosome. Here S is the Swedberg unit and we uh, it is also known as the sedimentation coefficient as I mentioned and it is uh, basically related to the density and size of the particle. So the main function of the ribosome is that it helps in the protein synthesis. 
So these are the sites of the polypeptide or the protein synthesis. We know that in case of you, in case of prokaryotes, there are many ribosomes that can attach to a single mRNA and can lead to the multiple polypeptide chain formation simultaneously. So they uh, lead to the structure formation, which is known as the polysome. So we studied that in the first class. So uh, the main function of the ribosome is that it helps in the protein synthesis. And also we studied that when ribosomes are present on the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, they may give it a rough appearance leading to the, uh, uh, so we call that structure as a rough endoplasmic reticulum. And if it is absent, then it is known as the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So this was about the ribosomes. So the next is the cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton, as the name suggests, cyto is related to cell. Skeleton is, uh, so, uh, so cytoskeleton is something that is giving the support to the cell. So just like our skeletal system. So it is a complex network of inter interconnected microfilaments and microtubules of protein fibers which are present in the cytoplasm. The microfilaments are composed of actin and microtubules are composed of tubules. So uh, the main composition of microfilaments is that actin, while the main protein of which the microtubules are made up of is the tubulin subunit. And as the name suggests, and as I also mentioned, the main function of cytoskeleton is that it provides a mechanical support to the cell. Also, it helps in the cell motility, cell movement. It helps in the cell division and helps in the maintenance of the cell shape. So what are the different types of uh, cytoskeletal filaments which are present? So these can be actin microfilaments, these are intermediate, mic intermediate filaments and these are microtubules. So actin microfilaments are made up of actin subunits and made up of actin protein. Microtubules are made up of tubulin protein and intermediate filaments are made up of intermediate filament protein. Uh, actin filaments are dynamic, they help in the movement. They are directional, that is they have a polarity, they have a plus end, they have a minus end. They <laughs> help in maintaining the structure of the cell and allows the movement of the cell. And uh, while in case of intermediate filaments, they are relatively static, that is they do not move. They provide the structural integrity and the high tensile strength to the cell. In case of microtubules, which are made up of tubulin protein, they are dynamic. That is, they also move, they are directional, they also have a polarity, they are non-compressible structures and they help in the formation of mitotic spindle during the time of cell division. So, these are, this is about the cytoskeleton and the main function, as I already mentioned, main function is to provide the mechanical support, cell motility, cell division and maintenance of, maintenance of cell shape. The next or, uh, component is cilia and flagella. Cilia for the term, the singular of the cilia is cilia and flagella singular is flagellum. So uh, our hair like outgrowth of the cell membrane and they help in the movement of this uh, cell. Cilia are small structures which work like ores and causing the movement of either the cell or the surrounding fluid. While flagella in comparison to cilia are comparatively longer and are they and are responsible for the cell movement. So cilia basically work like when we suppose we row a boat and we use the oars. So uh, therefore it helps in uh, like providing the thrust to allow the movement of the cell while flagella is the one that acts as a motor for the movement of the cell. So flagella are comparatively longer. They are relatively less in number as compared to the cilia. And uh, the prokaryotic bacteria also possess flagella, but these are structurally different from that of the eukaryotic flagella. The electron microscopic study of cilium or the flagellum show that they are covered with the plasma membrane and their core is called the exoneme. They possess a number of microtubules running parallel to the long axis, as we will see further. So exoneme, so this is the uh, basically the section of the cilia and uh, we can see that the exoneme usually has a nine doublets of a radially arranged peripheral microtubules. 
so these blue colored structures blue colored ring like structures are basically the peripheral microtubules that are present in the form of tubulates that is two present together so per, uh, peripheral there are nine such peripheral peripheral tubules that are present in the form of tubulates and a pair of centrally located microtubule so we can see that these are the nine starting from here we can see that these are the nine peri uh, doublets of peripheral microtubules and one is present at the center one pair so such an arrangement of microtubules is referred to as the 9 plus 2 micro uh, sorry 9 plus 2 array the central tubules are connected by a by bridges and is also enclosed by central sheath as we can see highlighted by red in this diagram so the the central microtubules are connected by a bridge like structure and they are con and they are covered or enclosed inside a central sheath which is connected to one of the tubules of each peripheral doublets by a uh, we can say spike like structure which is known as a radial spoke so this central sheath is connected to the peripheral tubules through a radial spoke so Uh, since there are nine such peripheral microtubule doublets so there are nine radial spokes which are present that helps in making the connection between the peripheral microtubules and the central sheath enclosing the central microtubules the peripheral doublets are also interconnected uh, like this there is an interconnection between these peripheral microtubules as well through the linkers so these peripheral tubules are interconnected through these structures which are known as the linkers and uh, also uh, the inter doublet bridge is present that helps in the connection that <laughs> connects with the two doublets of the peripheral microtubules so this was the structure of the cilia both the cilium and flagellum emerge from the centrio like structure which is called the basal bodies so both the cilia and flagella emerge from the same structure which is a central like structure called the basal bodies so this was the uh, basic structure of the uh, cilia so we can again if i'll repeat in short so it consists of 9 plus it has a 9 plus 2 array arrangement in which there are nine peri my uh, doublets of peripheral microtubules which are present while one is uh, while one doublet is present at the center also it is uh, the central doublet is enclosed inside a central sheath and that is connected through the peripheral microtubules through a radial spoke so there are nine such radial spokes that helps in the connection uh, then these peripheral microtubules are interconnected through the linkers and also through the inter doublet bridge so this was about the cilia and flagella the however there are some differences between the cilia and flagella as i mentioned cilia are small in size they are 5 to 10 microns while flagella are long they can be up to 150 microns as i also mentioned that cilia are more in number they may be up to 14000 per cell while flagella are few in number they may range from 1 to 8 so a uh, bacteria may have like a cell may have a uh, <coughs> very few flagella ranging from 1 to 8 number of flagella uh the next is cilia beat in coordinated manner while flagella beats independently and uh, cilia take part mainly in locomotion and attachment while flagella is involved only in the locomotion there is no role of flagella in the attachment so the main function of cilia and flagella was to allow the movement of the cell and helps in the attachment of the cell with the surface the next was uh, the next is the centrosome and centrioles they were discovered by von banden in 1880 centrosome is found in animal cells and in some motile algae it is absent in plant cells this we studied when we were studying the differences when we were learning the differences between the plant cells and the animal cells so there we um, understood that centrosomes are not present in the animals uh, are not present in the plant cells they are absent in the plant cells and centrosomes are present near the nucleus it has two cylindrical structures that are called the centrioles that are surrounded by a less dense cytosol called the centrosphere so this is the structure of centrosome 
where we can see that centrosome has two cylindrical structures that we called as centrioles, which is shown in the right side of the fig uh, figure. So these centrioles are usually li lie perpendicular to each other, and these are surrounded by a less dense cyto less denser cytosol called the centrosphere. So this is about the centrosome, and the centrosome consists of is made up of two cylindrical structures, which is called the centrioles. So centrioles are arranged at right angles to one another, as we can see in this figure also. So they are present at perpendicularly to each other. Each centriole is made up of a wall of nine triplets of microtubules. So just like uh, we studied the uh, uh, like arrangement of microtubules in case of cilia and flagella, similarly, these microtubules are arranged in a pattern, which is a wall of nine triplets of microtubules or cartwheel structure, which we call in case of centrioles. So, in case of centrioles, it, these are nine microtubules and they have a triplet fibril, which is A, B and C. And uh, A of the triplet is connected to the C through a CA connective. Also, uh, like these A, B and C microtubules run perpendicular to each other. So, when we look into, uh, like, when we look from upside of these uh, centrioles, we will find that these A, B and C um, microtubules are running perpendicular to the triplets of microtubules are running perpendicular to the each other forming a cartwheel like structure so the main function uh, the adjacent microtubules are connected by the proteinaceous strands and uh, they have nine spokes in total are connected from the central rod or which is also known as the hub so there are nine spokes like one two three four five six uh, seven eight and nine spokes in total so that are connected through the central rod the main function of these microtubules uh, of these centrioles is that they form esters and organize the formation of spindle fibers during cell division spindle formation like centrioles play an important role during that so they form the esters and organize the formation of spindle fibers during the cell division that further helps in the arrangement of chromosome so that further the cell division can take place. Also, they are involved in the formation of cilia, flagella and axial filament in the sperms. So these are the main functions of the centrioles. Again, centrioles are present only in animal cells and they are absent in the plant cells. So this is also an uh, like important uh, aspect or important point to be noted here. And... Uh, uh, the main function was to uh, that it helps in the spindle formation during the cell division. The next is the nucleus, which is also known as the carrion. The plural is nuclei. So we know that nucleus was uh, discovered by Robert Brown in 1831. And uh, it is a darkly stained material inside the cell. It is the largest cell organelle which is present in eukaryotic cells, especially in case of animal cells as we know that in case of plant cells it might be vacuoles that connect that occupies most of the space inside the cell so in case of eukary eukaryotic cells especially in case of animal cells it is the largest cell organelle which is present and uh, it is usually spherical while uh, like usually it is spherical but shape may change in case of some cells for example <laughs> it may be lobed in case of wbc or kidney shaped in case of paramecium. Usually, a uh, single nucleus is present inside a cell, but in some cases, there might be two nucleus there, which is present in, inside the cell. Such cells are known as dikaryotic, since two nucleus are present. So, karyo word is related to nucleus. So, whenever it is uh, like, whenever it is said like dikaryotic, so it di means two. So, that organ organism has two nucleus. So, usually the nucleus is spherical, but it may be lobed shaped or kidney shaped depending on the cells also. As I mentioned, nucleus is also the third organelle which I mentioned that has a double membrane structure. So, it is a double layered nucleum, it is a double layered membrane structure, outer membrane, inner nuclear envelope, inner nuclear membrane and uh, 
there is there are pores which are present in between these which are known as the nuclear pores also a transparent granular matrix called the nucleoplasm or karyolin is filled inside the nucleus and chromatin network composed of dna histones and a darkly stainable spherical body called nucleolus so in short what is present in the nucleus so nucleus is a double membrane structure outer one is known as the outer nuclear membrane and inner one is known as the inner nuclear membrane then there are pores which are present in the nuclear membrane so these pores are known as the nuclear pores the fluid which is filled inside the nucleus is known as the nucleoplasm and beside this there is a structure which is called as the chromatin so chromatin are nothing but they are the condensed form of the chromosomes which are present so during different stages of cell division there are different stages of chromosomes also like in some uh, like at some stage there will be chromosomes will be highly condensed while on the other stage they will be loosely present inside the cell so basically uh, chromatin is nothing but the condensed form of chromosome that consists of dna and histone proteins these histone proteins helps in the binding of the chromosome leading to the structure formation which is known as the chromatin and these chromatin uh, and all beside this there is a darkly stainable spherical body which is present inside the cell inside the nucleus itself and it is called as the nucleolus so the cells having nucleus are called nucleated or enucleate unucleated cells uh, the cells which lose nucleus at maturity for example we know that mammalian rbc or uh, sieve tubes in case of angiosperms these cells lose nucleus when they mature so these are called as enucleated cells the cells having incipient nucleus in which the nucleus is uh, like a uh, basically diminished nucleus or we can say that the uh, very like primitive nucleus where as such nucleus is not present dna is present in naked in the naked form so uh, such organisms are called prokaryotic cells example bacteria and nostoc and the cells having well defined nucleus are eukaryotic cells we know that in case of higher plants and animal cells the nucleus is well defined and they are a part of eukaryotic Cell, and they come under the category of eukaryotic cells so what is what are the functions of a nucleus Nuc nucleus is the controlling center of the cell it is the main unit where the protein formation protein synthesis may take place so basically it is it contains the genetic material dna which regulates the various metabolic activities of the body by directing the synthesis of structural and functional proteins so basically when we will uh, study further about the dna pro uh, proteins we will get to know that dna gets transcribed into the rna which gets translated into the protein so it is the dna uh, which is present inside the cell that regulates various met metabolic activities directing the synthesis of structural and functional proteins so since most of the proteins uh, the uh, Uh, formation of proteins is dependent on the dna which is the genetic material which is present inside the nucleus therefore nucleus is the main controlling center of the cell controlling all the activities of the cell controlling the protein formation inside the cell so uh, this was about the nucleus as we studied chromatin so to understand chromatin further we should know what are chromosomes so interphase nucleus as i mentioned that <laughs> during different phases of the cell cycle there are uh, uh, chromosomes are present either loose they, they may be present loosely or they may be present in the bound form so interphase nucleus has a loose and distinct network of nucleoprotein fibers called as chromatin this chromatin are highly stained uh, like darkly stained material and the material of nucleus these chromatins are stained by the basic dyes for example acetocarmine and uh, it was given the name chromatin by scientist fleming during different stages of cell division cells show structured chromosome in place of the nucleus thus chromosome is highly condensed form of chromatin so we can say that uh, from this figure it is very clear that what i actually mean by chromosome what i actually mean by chromatin so this is the dna which is 
present inside the cell this dna is very long for example it may like it may be up to 2 meter in length but it is difficult to accommodate this 2 meter of dna inside this small cell which is in which is which may range in microns maybe so this dna is then bounded through the stone proteins these stone proteins uh, along with the dna and some other non stone proteins form a compact structure which is chromatin and these chromatin further form a more complex or more compact unit which is known as the chromosome so we can see that uh, and our dna is therefore present in the form of chromosome inside our cell so uh, basically uh, we see that the chromosome is highly condensed form of the chromatin and chromatin contains dna and some basic proteins called histones some non histone proteins and also some rna so uh, chromosomes can be best studied at metaphase stage because size of the chromosome is shortest during the metaphase and if we want to study the shape of the chromosome uh, we have to study the shape at the anaphase stage so at different stages like if we have to study the uh, like the like if i have to study the size of the chromosome like if i want to count the number of chromosomes or if i i want to understand the how the chromosome looks like so the best stage at which i want i can study the chromosome is at the metaphase stage the number of chromosome which are present in a gamete gamete is called the genome so basically uh, we know that we are diploids so there are two sets of chromosome which are present inside our cell so the number of chromosome which are present in a single set is known as the genome so for example uh, like we humans have 46 number of chromosomes that is we have 23 pairs chromosomes so the total amount of genome a total amount of gene content or the number of chromosomes in a gamete that is the gamete on, only contains the single set of the chromosome that is in gamete n is equal to like in gametes the number of chromosome which are present in a gamete is 23 so that will form a unit which is known as the genome and uh, a single human cell has approximately 2 meter long thread of dna distributed among its 46 that is 23 pairs of the chromosomes and every chromosome visible only in dividing cells essentially has a primary constriction like they have a primary constriction at the uh, center or which is also known as the centromere on the sides of which disc shaped structures which are known as the kinetochores are present so every chromosome has a constriction at the center which is known as the centromere this is the primary constriction and uh, this is the known as the centromere and from this centromere uh, from like on the sides we can see there are disc like structures which are present these are known as the kinetochores so from centromere kind of like the kinetochores are present beside the centromere in a form of a disc like structure centromere helps holds the two chromatids of a chromosome so during cell division when we know that there is a formation of sister chromatid so this is the centromere that holds both the chromatids so these so this is the chromatid 1 this is chromatid 2 which are hold by the centromere in a chromosome also uh, like uh, based on the position of the centromere like where this is present the shorter arm like Uh, the centromere may divide the chromosome into two arms the one arm may be short the other arm may be long or both may be equal as well so the shorter arm is known as the p arm from the term petite which means small so the shorter arm is known as the p arm while the longer arm is known as the q arm so based on the position of the centromere like where the centromere resides inside the like where this uh, center where this primary constriction is present so based on that either both the arms may be uh, equal in size <coughs> there may be a shorter arm and a longer arm so based on the position of the centromere the chromosomes can be classified into four types uh, they may be metacentric submetacentric acrocentric or telocentric so metacentric as the name clearly suggests like it is the centromere is present just in the middle of the chromosome forming two equal arms of the chromosome 
so like there is no short arm no long arm both the arms of the chromosomes are equal in size while in sub metacentric chromosome the centromere shifts a little upwards creating a shorter arm and a longer arm but uh, the difference between the shorter arm and a longer arm is not much as we see that in case of acrocentric uh, the in case of acrocentric chromosome the centromere is situated close to its end forming one extremely short arm and one extremely long arm so th this is the difference between sub metacentric and acrocentric that in case of sub metacentric uh, uh, there is a formation of a short arm and a longer arm but in case of uh, acrocentric uh, since the centrosome is present more close to its end therefore one arm is extremely short as compared to the other that and the last is the telocentric where the centromere or the uh, where the centromere is present at the just at the terminal so <laughs> there is a very short arm which is like short arm is uh, uh, the may or may not be visible so due to the presence of the centromere which is at the terminal of the chromosome so they, these are the four types of uh, chromosomes Uh, based on the position of the centromere that is metacentric submetacentric acrocentric or telocentric sometimes a few chromosomes have non staining this is very important that the secondary constrictions the primary constriction was centromere the secondary constrictions are may be present in few chromosomes and these are non staining that is they do not take up the stain and they are present at a constant location and this gives the appearance of a small fragment called the satellite so we can see in these this figure so this this chromosome has a secondary constriction which is present at the uh, like beside the primary constriction that is the beside centromere there are secondary constrictions which are present and these are known as the satellite these small fragments since they appear like a satellite so these are known as the satellite the secondary constriction is non staining and found at a constant location as i mentioned and it's it is also known as nor nor stands for nucleolar organizing region so this these uh, uh, like secondary constrictions are also known as nor and in humans these are present in what number of chromosomes in 13 14 15 21 and 22 so in case of humans these secondary constrictions are present in five chromosomes uh, chromosome number 13 14 15 21 and 22 so this was about the chromosomes so the main function of chromosome is that it contains the genetic material dna and it helps in the transfer of genetic information from one cell to the like from one generation to the next generation during the time of cell division the next and the last organelles which is present in the cell inside the cell are the microbodies these microbodies are very minute membrane bound structures that may contains the enzymes for the metabolic activities these microbodies can be uh, of various types like peroxisome spherosomes glyoxisomes so peroxisomes helps in the breakdown of long uh, chain fatty acids they are involved in the peroxide met metabolism in the animal cells and they are involved in for photorespiration inside the plant cells spherosome helps in the synthesis and storage of lipids while glyoxisomes as the name suggests they convert the fats into the carbohydrates so these are the three main different types of the microbodies that are present in the plant cells and the animal cells so peroxisome that helps in the breakdown of long chain fatty acids and involved in peroxide metabolism in animals while in case of plants they are involved in photorespiration spherosome that helps in the synthesis and storage of lipids and glyoxisomes that converts the fat into the carbohydrates so this is all about the different organelles which are present inside the cell i hope like uh, all of these things are clear to you and if there is any doubt i i'll be happy to take up those doubts either today or in the next session so basically what we studied today is so we first study what is mitochondria then we get to know what are plastids what are different types of plastids what is the function of chloroplast 
what are ribosomes what are the different subunits of ribosomes which are present in a prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cells and uh, then what are what is the cytoskeleton what is the composition of components of cytoskeleton what is cilia and flagella what is the basic structure of cilia and uh, then we studied what are centrosomes and centrioles and then uh, we studied nucleus which is the controlling center of the cell and the chromosomes that are present inside the nucleus so based uh, based on this uh, i have certain questions to discuss so the question number one is powerhouse of the cell is option one mitochondria option two ribosome option three golgi complex and option four endoplasmic reticulum so we know that it is mitochondria that contains the ATP synthase complex that helps in the synthesis of ATP. Mitochondria is the site of aerobic respiration inside the cell that helps in the formation of ATP. And ATP is the basic energy, uh, is the basic unit that provides the energy to the cell. So in a way, mitochondria is the powerhouse of that cell that helps in the generation of energy. Second is, infoldings of inner mitochondrial membrane are called so option one is crystae, option two is cytoplasm, option three is crystal, option four is matrix. So we know that the outer membrane of the mitochondria is smooth, while inner mitochondrial membrane has finger-like infoldings, which are known as crystae. So the correct answer is option number one, crystae. Question number three, which of the following are plastids? Option number one, chloroplast. Option number two, leucoplast. Option number three, chromoplast. Option number four, all of the above. So we know that chloroplasts are green colored plastids, leucoplasts are colorless plastids, and chromoplasts are colored plastids that may be present in fruits and in leaves. So all of these are the kind of plastids only. So the correct answer is all of the above. Since chloroplast, leucoplast, and chromoplast all are a type of plastids. The next question is thylakoids are arranged in stack like piles of points called stroma, matrix, granum, or quantasome. So we know that thylakoids, <coughs> sorry, which are coin-like structures, they are arranged in stack-like piles of coins to form the uh, to form the structure which is known as the granum. So the correct answer is the granum. While well, stroma is the matrix, which is uh, the stroma is the matrix of the chloroplast itself. So the correct answer is that. The thylakoids are arranged in stacks like the piles of coins called renum. Which organelle is not surrounded by any membrane? So we know that it is the ribosome which is not surrounded by any membrane, while mitochondria, lysosome, chloroplast are all surrounded by membrane. So the correct answer is option number four, ribosome. The next question is arrangement of microtubules in the core of cilium is. So we know that cilia consist of doublets of microtubules, peripheral microtubules, nine doublets of such peripheral microtubules, and then there is a central pair of a microtubule which is present. So such an arrangement we know that it is known as a 9 plus 2 arrangement or 9 plus 2 array arrangement. So the correct answer is option number 2, 9 plus 2. Self duplication or fission does not occur in. So option number one is mitochondria. We know that mitochondria do undergo fission. Option number two is centrioles. Yes, centrioles also do divide by the process of fission. Option number three is chloroplast. So as I told all earlier in the class lecture, well during the lecture also that chloroplast also divide by the process of fission. And option number four is ribosome. So actually ribosome does not divide by the process of fission. So the correct answer to this question is option number fourth ribosome as it does not self duplicate or it does not divide by the process of the fission. Question number eight, <coughs> chromosome is highly condensed form of, so we know that uh, first we go through the option. So option number one is chlorophyll. Option number two is chromatin. Option number three is rRNA. And option number four is microtubules. So we know that chromosomes are nothing but they are highly condensed form of chromatin. Chromatin along with histone chromatin that consists of histone proteins, non-histone proteins, RNA, DNA, 
all of these components leads to the formation of chromatin and these chromatin further condensed to form the structural unit which is known as the chromosome so the correct answer is chromosome is highly condensed form of a chromatin question number 9 which of the following is correct for secondary constrictions so we know that in a chromosome there are two types of constrictions the one is primary constriction the other is a secondary constriction secondary constriction may or may not be present while the primary constriction which is known as centromere is present in the chromosome and uh, so let's see what the option says about the secondary constriction so first is that they are non staining second is they are found at a constant location and third is they are nor that is nuclear organized regions so option number fourth is all of the above so we know that secondary constrictions are non staining they do not take up the stains and also they are found at a constant location at the constant location on the chromosomes and they are a part of nor also so option number 4 that is they are non staining found at constant location and nor that is they are nuclear organized regions so all of these options are correct and therefore uh, option number 4 that says all of the above is correct answer question number 10 centromere is at middle in which chromosome so we know that centromere which is the primary constriction which is present in the chromosome based on the position of the centromere chromosomes are divided into four types as we study so they may be metacentric submetacentric acrocentric or telocentric so it is the metacentric in which uh, the centromere is present at the center thus dividing the Uh, chromosome into two equal halves while in case of submetacentric there is a shorter arm there is a longer arm in case of acrocentric the shorter arm is highly reduced so the size of a shorter arm is very less as compared to the longer arm and in case of telocentric the centromere is present just at the uh, like uh, the shorter arm is almost not visible so therefore the correct answer where the centromere is present at the middle so the correct answer is meta centric so with this i would like to end today's session i hope you would have get to know what are what is a cell what are the different organelles which are present inside the cell what is the function of each and every organelle how is different organelles function in association with each other just we just like we see in case of endomembrane system like how these organelles help each other in packaging manufacturing packaging and exporting the components in and outside the cell so <coughs> like what is the center of the cell that what that controls the activity of the cell so these are the different organelles and this is all about the a uh, unit uh, the cell the unit of life so with this i would like to end this chapter today and if there are any further any doubts feel free to ask me uh, like whenever it is uh, convenient for you thank you